Hey Jerry, thanks so much for the send off. I can't wait to turn your centers into some beautiful roses. So thanks so much for joining me. We're going to get busy now and figure out how to do the petals for this particular rose. And then Inga is going to come along and do the foliage for you. And I know it's just going to be a stunner. Once again, don't forget to use the hashtag paper flower challenge. And if you do enjoy our videos, don't forget to like and subscribe. We'd love to have you join us. So thanks so much for joining us. Let's dive right in and let's get some petals on this beautiful center. Hello, paper florist. And once again, thanks, Jerry, for the handoff. Your center is amazing. So I want to show you what we're going to need for this rose to make the petals for it. So, and what we're going to be making is we're going to be making a single and a double in this rose. And these, this is what the end product is going to look like. You'll need your centers, and since we're going to make two, I've got two of those. You need scissors, a curling tool, and for this you can use a skewer or even a small dowel, whatever you have that you normally use for curling. Um, obviously some glue, we always need that. And I have these two pan pastels. This one is titanium white, and this one is Hansa yellow. So we're gonna do those and you need an application tool. I'm using this blender brush. I think the blender brushes work really well for this application. And, um, but I think you could use a, maybe an eyeshadow brush or eyeshadow sponge, something, a bigger sponge, I don't think would work. So, but you can try it. It's your world's your oyster. And of course you need some paper. You can make this rose with probably any kind of paper that you'd like to. I originally tried to make it with um, the 90 gram and it was just a little too floppy flimsy for me, but you could give it a try. It might work for you. Um, but you could also use 180 for this. Just make sure you give it a good stretch first. You do want some sculpting ability left in it, but I find the Deblet works really well. So this is a pink on pink. This is a fuchsia and pink. I don't know the, the names of the colors, but you can see this is a fuchsia pink with a light pink. This is the Deblet I also use to make fuchsias. So that's it. So um, that's all that you're going to need for this tutorial. And in a moment, I'll be back and I'll show you how to get started. Okay, so welcome back. So to make these petals, we're going to need a couple of strips of cray paper. I have a strip here that is approximately two and a quarter inches tall by 18 inches wide. And I cut two of them. This one is two and a half inches wide or tall and 18 inches wide as well. And I cut two of these and I think that'll create enough petals for us to do both the single and the double rows. So to get started, we are going to um, start cutting our petals. And um, this petal is a, a modified teardrop, if you will. Um, so I'm gonna cut these and I always do them in threes, it's just my style. So I take this strip of gray paper, fold it over to what I think the bloom, the width of the petal should be. And this is about, it's a little shy of two inches. And then I just cut that. And then I'll take this piece and fold it in half and I will cut our modified teardrop. So we're just gonna cut around, create the top of the petal, come on down. And instead of going straight down from here, we're gonna come down higher and create a tail on it. That tail is what we're gonna to connect to the petal, to the flower. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit while I'm doing this about the rose that we're making. It's the Gallica Rosa, Rosa Gallica officinalis, or Apothecary's Rose. It has a long and tender history. The ancient Greeks and Romans made, cultivated this rose. And it comes in lots of different colors. Um, the Gallica roses themselves come in um, pinks and reds and mauves and copper colors. Um, I haven't really seen white, but I'm sure they're there. And um, so you can make it in any color combo that you want. But we're gonna do it in the fuchsia side up and the pink on the back. And I think it's a really nice compliment. So I think you, um, have, you should have already seen Jerry's tutorial that talks about 
making the center. And I think it looks really stunning. It was pretty easy to do. So I cut these in threes and I did it three times. And then there's not enough left. There's too much left here for three petals. So I'm going to make four petals out of this one. And they might be a little smaller and we'd use them as our first petals. So I don't like really cutting through eight layers of, of crepe paper. Um, but if you have a really sharp pair, pair of scissors, you should be able to do that. So again, I'm cutting around and instead of just going straight down, I'm modifying it by just cutting out that tail. And we'll do the same thing with the larger ones. And we will make these a little wider. A little wider, there we go. Just a hair wider. So these are gonna be a really generous two maybe two and a sixteenth inch where the, the first petals were a little shy of two inches. These are going to be a full two inches. And we're going to cut these exactly the same way. And we're just going to come down and cut the tail. And then you open it up. There you go. Actually, this one looks like, yeah, see, I didn't. Let's fix that. We'll just come around and there, fix that. So you can fix, nothing's an accident. We're just gonna, we can fix it as we go. And we do it again. There we go. Let's see how many petals we got out here. One, two, three, four, five, six. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We have 13 petals. I think we technically are going to need 15, so you'll need to cut just a couple of more. And on this one, I think 12 would probably be plenty. And I think... Do this one as fours again as well. So I would suggest that you cut maybe 15 petals of each piece. And I have, as I said, two of each. We've got more than enough. I cut some earlier and here they are. So I see, trash that one. Um, okay, so I think we have enough petals. So we're good here. When we come back, I'm gonna show you how to color the petals. Okay, so we're back. So now I have my handy dandy blending brush. I've got the titanium white and the Hansa yellow. You could probably use other colors, um, whatever you have. I'm a firm believer of use, using what you have. Um, I do like the white, however, and the reason for that is when I start coloring these, that white set, lays down a nice opaque um, first layer. And you can see here how those petals are colored and it's and it's got this warm glow around the center so that's what we're going to try to recreate so we take a little bit of the white and i'm just going to take each petal a little bit of the white and i'm just going to start working this ink into the petal and we're probably going to go up about a third of the way this is probably going to be the longest part of your making these flowers. Then I'm gonna come in with the yellow and bring that in. And again, the one reason, the reason I really like these blender brushes is that it really works into the paper. So I can really get that nice glow. There, so I'll do a couple more for you. And you're only coming up about Go a quarter to two thirds of the petal. Just create this round. You want it to come around like this. And I'll come with the yellow. And again, I, I do, I, I'm sure you can do this with any color you want. If you did um, a white one, you could still do it with the yellow center. I think that'd be really pretty. Pink would be the same. I made some lighter colored ones with the same technique and same colors. 
So. Get that laid, that color laid down. And um, I think you could probably do this with a sponge as well, um, but it would have to be a small sponge. This is a much smaller um, blender brush than I would normally use. Okay, so I'll continue doing that. You can do yours, I'll show you the big ones. It's absolutely the same, big ones. And the reason that, you, you know, you see, one of the reasons I go ahead and do the big ones is you, you notice that you see the, um, the color here, but when these petals open up, you also see it down here. Now, not all of these have the color on them. So I think you do need to color all of them. So you do it the same process as you did before. Add in the yellow. And there's the large one. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish up my petals and you can figure, finish up yours as well. And when we come back, we will start manipulating and shaping the petals. Okay, so welcome back. So I've colored all my leaves and I have, um, oh, what, 22 of the small ones and five, 10, 15, 20-ish of the big ones. We will not need all these petals, but I always like to have a few extra. So I'm gonna show you how to shape these petals. And we're gonna use our scissors to shape these petals. So the first thing that we're gonna do is do a scissor curl. And um, on that flower, what you'll notice is that one side of the petals in the center goes down and one kind of comes up. So it's it's how it's unfurling from the, from the bud. So if it's unfurling like this, this one's gonna be attached and this one's gonna be out. So I'm gonna take my scissors and um, just, give it a scissor curl and what this process is is just going at a 45 degree angle to the grain of the paper and um it, it helps break down the pe the paper um you could be pretty rough with it but i've done this so many times it's just second nature to me but for you i would suggest be gentle with it the first time you do it so the easiest way to do this is to take this side and go down flip it over and do the same thing on the other side to get it to turn up. And then we're gonna cup that petal. So I'm just gonna create a pile over here of all the petals. And um, this goes pretty fast once you kind of get the hang of it. And as I'm doing this, I'm kind of looking for, of these petals, which ones appear to be the smallest ones, because those are the ones that I'm gonna put closest to that center. So um, I notice like this one is smaller. And you know, for this one, um, I'm gonna really make it turn up more and just give it a little kick outside out like that. And then it's gonna come up and over the bud. So I'm gonna put that one aside. And then I'm just gonna go through the rest of them really quickly. Doesn't take long. One, two, three, four. So I'll probably do about 10 of them with this scissor technique. I want this to come way up there. Let's do this. Come way up with that and then just a little. So there's another small one. Uh, this one's a little on the smaller side. Oops, I want it to go up more than anything. Curl up and over the, the bud. And here's another one. And then just give it a little kick on the outside. So I've got one, two, three, four. So these are going to be the centermost petals, and we're going to really have them curl in. Now, one of the suggestions I would make to you is to, as you can see my hands, is to use Krylon on these before you um, do all this. And I've chosen not to. Um, I probably will use Krylon on 
the entire bud after it's completed. So remember, we're doing enough petals here for two blooms. And the center petals, the first round or a couple rounds of petals are pretty similar. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six of these smaller ones. I've got one, two, five of the bigger ones. And I'm going to group them in fives. And the reason I'm grouping them in fives is what I found is that it takes about five petals to go around the bloom. So that's just that's just how I roll. I, I don't think there's any really truth to that. but And so I'm just gonna group them as we go. So I've done those first ones that are really tight and curled up around it. And the rest of them are gonna go the way I did the first time, which is curl a little on the front, a little on the back, and then cup it. And this is going to go pretty quickly once you get the hang of it. And what, one of the things that scissor curling does is it helps to break down the petal a little bit. The paper, is what I guess is what I'm really saying. It helps to break down the paper. Now, I've done this so many times, I can just do this this way. But you might find it easier. You might find it easier to um, flip it over like I did the first time. It just says you curl it. And then give them a nice good cup. So you can see how that looks. Kind of looks like a potato chip, doesn't it? We're going to do it the same way with all of these smaller petals. Now, in nature, I think that this this rose actually has three sizes of petals, but I think for our purposes, two works really well. So now we're going to do the big ones. And on this one, we're going to just scissor curl outward this way, scissor curl outward this way. And we're gonna, on some of them, we're gonna give them a little kick there, which if you've noticed on roses, a lot of times they have this little indentation. And since I've got so much Pampastel on my hands, I'm gonna clean them off because I'm transferring it back to that bloom and I don't wanna do that. So you can see I got Pampastel on there. There. So once again, we're going to go outward, 45 degree angles this way, 45 degree angle the other way. And not all of them are gonna have that kick. Some of them will just naturally kick. Um, and another really good thing that um, to do that I haven't done is to create a divot on some of these petals. Um, I think that if you look in nature, a lot of them do have that divot, and it does help create that. That, um, and you see, it just created a little dimple there, if you will. I think this is actually a small one. So let's put a divot in this one too, since we've got it here and it looks kind of square on the top. And I probably should have done this process with at least some of these smaller ones. And I don't always do it in the center. doesn't show so much on these on the smaller petals because there's so much curling that goes goes on but it does on the larger ones and then give it a nice curl and I'm going to add the kick back in there and I'm just going to do this as I go along 
then I, I want to go back to the you don't need a template idea is templates are like training wheels. Um, you know, you need them probably when you're first started starting out. And I tell you, I was really hesitant. I did a video um, on my, I think it's on my YouTube channel, about um, letting go of fear. And um, I think, you know, fear of going freehand is, is a big fear for a lot of paper florists. But think of them as um, training wheels. And there comes a time when you can take those training wheels off. And... Also, I found is it's not how you um, how you cut the petals that is most important. It's what you do, how you shape them. That's where you're going to get um, you know your artistic interpretation of your petals. Again, my hands get dirty. I always keep a I buy my Costco buy baby wipes by the big old case. And one box will last me quite a while. But I just keep them handy. They are so easy and that dries so fast that you don't need to um, dry your hands off or wait for them to dry. They dry so quickly. So I'm going to take this one. I'm going to do it off center. This is a big petal. I don't know if I'm gonna use this petal and how it came out so big, but we have extras. And I always err on the side of cutting extra petals. I think it makes a lot more sense than, um, you know, having to stop and cut some more petals because you didn't cut enough. It's just a little bit of paper. You know, one more little piece of paper. And um, this doublet, um, I think if you buy it retail, it's four something, probably. Uh, um, and I'm going to take a couple of these and flip them up just for fun. Um, it's probably $4 and something US. And um, you can get quite a few roses of any bloom out of, out of it. Um, you know, unless you're doing something like a Juliet rose, some kind of David Austin rose. Um, then you're going to use an awful lot of them. I'm just going to kind of throw these all in a pile. A series of them like this. Like I said, you don't have to divot all of them, but I think they're prettier with a divot. Although, you know, when you do them with the curling out and then the curling in, probably doesn't even show. And again, one of the reasons we do these tutorials for you is just to give you like a, a landing page, a place to start. So, um, okay, I'm going to clean my hands. I'm going to get my glue and my centers ready, and then we'll start putting these petals on their center. Okay, so we're back and we are going to um, start putting these petals on and we're gonna start with six petals to start. So I've got three of them that totally come over the top more. And then I'm just gonna grab three, more, random three more of these are the smaller petals. And I'm going to start by putting ever so slight an amount of glue on here. Maybe. And just because that glue is going to pull the color off that you work so hard getting on there. So just a little bit of glue. You can see that right at the very tip of that petal. And we are going to put most of these petals on with the flower upside down. I know that sounds crazy, but it works for me. So I'm going to share how I do it with you. So here's my center, and I'm just going to like turn this so you can see it from straight up. And I'm going to take one of my first petals, and I'm going to see how I'd like it to sit. 
because I want to come up, I want to come up and sit right underneath the center. Oops, it doesn't want to stay because I tried to do it too many times. There we go. Okay, so there. Then I'm going to go make, I'm going to make, do these in thirds this first round. And one of the things that you're doing with this first round is you're kind of setting how you're going to, sorry about my head, um, how you're going to put these on. So I'm going to do the same thing here. And so I've got my first three petals on there. This first one does not. It's not happy. There we go. Okay. So we basically, if we look here on the bottom uh, underside, we've got our petals set. These petals are all the same height. We know that. We want them to sit all at the same height on the top of the bloom. So we're going to come in with this first round of petals and we're just going to start adding a few more Maybe. I don't know, I want to move that over a little more. There we go. So I'm just coming in and kind of filling in the blanks is what I'm doing. But I'm offsetting it just a little. And I'm keeping that set line, I call it a set line, all the way around so it's the same. And I'll do the same thing with this last one. Okay, so there's our first row petals. Make sure you get these to really stick well. Get in there with your fingers and just really press it. And we're going to um, open this up just a little bit to see what we've got. Okay. So our next round of petals, we're going to do five of these smaller ones. And I don't have anything to set that in. It was right there. Okay. So I'm going to put glue on these. And again, ever be sparing with the glue. Okay, and the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look where we have a gap. Okay, we have a gap here. So we're gonna put, we're just gonna start here where the gap is. And the one thing you wanna make sure that you do not do is do not put two petals directly behind each other. You want them all to sit on their own. There we go. Because I'm using this glue ever so sparingly. I'm going to go around. Up. You're going to have this problem too. It's because there's so much pan pastel on there. It just doesn't like to stick. Okay, so there we go. And we're going to keep on where we left off. Filling in the gaps. And then you can just pull it out and see kind of where you need to put them. See, I've got two here. I don't want that. I want to move this one over. So this one is going to go out here instead. Fill in that bank, and then I'm going to put the last one here. Okay, so come back in. That's all of our small petals. These are not lined up properly. There we go. Okay, so come back in and get them adhered really well. And we're just gonna set that aside to let that dry for just a minute. I wanna move this one over. There we go. I'll move this one over. There we go. Okay, so I'm just gonna set that aside and we're gonna move on to our larger petals. And we're only going to need five or so. So I'm just going to take five random ones. Okay. 
five. I'm going to put some glue on these. And I might give these a tad more glue just to get them to stick better. If you can see that. Okay. Grab my... It only takes a couple minutes for these to kind of grab. Okay. We're already doing well here. And we're going to start where we think that we need a petal. Now, one of the things, before I put that on, one of the things you want to do with this one as well is I want to put this one like here. And I want, I'm going to go down, I'm going to go down just a little bit, start a new set line and go up about, oh gosh, probably about less than an eighth of an inch, maybe a sixteenth of an inch there you go get it sticking on there really well and then I'm just going to go through and look for the gaps here so I'll go around once And I think one here, we'll try to start with one here. Grab one more. So this makes petal number six of the large ones. You go right there. Okay, so there you have it. So there you go, six, the six petals. I think we need one more. We need one right here. Ah, that's why there's number six. Okay. Back in here, like that. There we go. Now we're good. And then just make sure you come back around and pinch this together. When you open it up, we'll let it dry a little bit and then we'll open it up. Okay, so I'm just going to set this aside to dry for now. Straighten that back out. There we go. Okay, so now we're going to move on to our double. I've got my petal, my center here. And one of the ways I manipulate this center is just to... I like, to, I like them to be a little messy. There you go. But out. Okay. So we're going to take six of these small ones. start with this smallest petal here and bring it right up and under the fringe the center Get it on there good and I'm going to do the same thing as we did before we're going to do this in thirds turn it over just to get it to stick well there and then the last one will go in the last slot. So we have three. Okay. OK. 
Okay, and these other three, so we've got to start here. These other three are gonna go right in between. And so we've got our set line going here. So we've got the edge of our, the bottom of our petals are gonna all line up together. I'm gonna pinch those on really well. And then, then the last one, actually. Yep, that was right there. Put the last one here. Okay, so we've got six petals on there. Okay, and we still have some gaps. That's okay, we're gonna fill those in. So I'm just gonna set this down. And I'll sit right here, right. And I'm gonna grab five of the other small ones. Well, I have six here, so we'll do all six. Okay, so we're gonna grab our rose and we're gonna just start where we have the biggest gap, okay? And we have our biggest gap over here. So we're gonna start with our petals there. And we're gonna keep that set line that we had before. And we're gonna go around, all the way around, making sure that we don't put, like I just did, don't put one petal right behind another. So I'm going to put another one right next to that first one. Okay. Then I'll come in with this one. It looks like it's going to be I want to air on the side of caution here. See, these are lining up together and I don't want that to do that. So I'm going to skip over that spot. I'll come back to it. And I'm going to put this one in here. And the one next to it. Another one. Again, we're looking for the gaps. Okay, so we have a gap there. And then we're going to check for our last petal to see where our gap is. And uh, gosh, we don't really have any too many, but I'm going to put it right here. Okay, so we've got that. And you know, you could stop here, have a true single. I added just a few more petals to mine. And then come in and just keep making sure that that glue is going to firmly set. Same thing, we're going to just go back for a minute to our first rows and just make sure that these petals are all gluing on here. And um, so we're going to come back to that. Now we're going to start with our larger petals. some glue on five of them. So we have five of them. And we're going to come back in and we're going to start just put laying petals all the way around here. I'm going to start here where the, it's the sparsest. And we're gonna do this one totally upside down, I think. Okay, so we're, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna place our petal up a little higher on our stem. So you can see you have bigger petals there. In fact, I think I'm gonna raise it up just a little, there we go. 
And then don't forget to pinch it down. Use your fingernails to get that really in there. Okay, now we're just gonna start going around with this one. And we've got our set point there, so we're gonna keep it level all the way. One. And, and when you're putting these on, you're going in a swirl pattern. You need to make sure that, I guess that's all of them. You need to make sure that you keep going in the same direction. So if you're going to play, lay, lay your petals on going this way, keep laying them on that way. So we're going to do our next row. Add a little more glue. five there and I'm going to go right where I left off the last petal I put on was this one so I'm going to come in and I'm going to start by filling in the gap coming in again same set point see from the top well maybe does not because this has got so much pan pastel on it it really doesn't like to stick that's why you really need to work on it a little bit And we're going to do the same thing all the way around. Make, paying attention to um, gaps. And you can kind of see them from the top where they are. See here I've got, let's come back. I've got these kind of lining up too much. I want to scoot this puppy over a little bit. There we go. There, now we'll put these back on here. And you'll still end up with them laying that way. And it seems like it just is inevitable. Go close on this one. Okay, so we're, we've got one more row to go. Come back and really work that glue into there because the pen pastel really is saying, I don't want to stick. So we're going to do the last of them. So um, it looks like I only did four. So we're going to go ahead and put all these petals on. Okay. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to eyeball this one from the top a little more. I know I need one there. Right? And I think I'll put one here. Well, I want to make sure that I don't lay two petals right on top of each other. I'll put one over here. Let's take it over. Oop, yep, get that to stay. off because my fingers have glue on them okay there we go so we've got those so I've got two more petals I'm going to put one over on over on this side right in between those two that are there and I'm going to turn it over again and look at it from the top and I think I need one over here Maybe here. See how that looks. Nope. There. So I made 22 of each petal and we used them all for both roses. Now, because there's so much pan pastel on here, 
we're going to do one other trick before I turn it over to Inga. And I'm just going to grab a piece of crepe paper. It doesn't matter what color. Uh, look at my stash here. Uh, I've just got a random piece because we we're going to cover this up. I'm just going to take a piece, probably eight or nine inches long. Dab some glue on there. And I'm going to just secure those petals with a quick wrap around them. And then just continue wrapping down. If you're going to add a rose hip, you would add it here as well. See, I got some glue there. That's okay. Okay, so here's our double, and we're just going to pull these petals down. And there you have your double. A little glue on it, get that off. On there, don't know how I got that. Here's our double, here's our single. I'm gonna do the same thing. Just grab a piece of crepe. This really just helps to set your flowers, your petals on here. Just come up right under there and just run. A little bit of paper and we'll run it down okay so now that we have this we're going to open this up and there's our single see it's just got a couple rows you don't even have to put this many petals on for a single. And then here's our double. Then we'll come in and fan out our fringe a little. here and then we're going to shape these petals just a little get in here and pull those babies out of there there we go okay so we have those three. so here's what we're going to do this is the double we're going to use our curling stick and I'm going to have some of these petals curl in even more just grab your finger and your skewer or whatever curling tool you're using and just twist it. And then you might want to like twist this one out more. And this just gives the flower a little more dimension. Same thing here. And you can just kind of randomly go in. I really don't like those being set that way. I'm hoping by moving it over a little bit that it'll dry that way there we go and you can just do that to your heart's content whatever makes you happy and these bottom ones you can curl them down even a little more together. I'm just gonna manipulate that a little bit. There we go. So you can see by coloring all those petals you see this Cut change in color down here. 
and just open that petal up. These are such pretty big open petals, open blooms. And I want, there we go. Okay, so there's that one. And same thing here. This one, because it's a single, we can even go a little crazy with it. Get these all away from the pistol. And then I give these a little more curl. Give this one a little more drama. Back here, open those up. I've never been one for a single bloom. I always, I'm a more is more kind of girl, but I have to tell you on these roses, these beautiful blooms with less petals on them are really so pretty. So there you have it. You can continue to do that if you like. So here are our two blooms. I think they're saying, I love the color. I do totally love the color. So I'm going to hand this off to Inga and she's going to do the remaining parts of this. She's so good at foliage, you're going to be surprised. She will turn anything, anything, my not so great rose into something fantastic. So thanks so much for joining us today. And one more time, if you do like the videos, that your admins do for you, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channels. And if you hit that little bell, you'll be notified every time we post a new video. And we will link to each other's video, each other's video as well. So you'll have access to all three of them. So once again, thanks for joining us on the Paper Florists. Hey, so wasn't that fun? We have a beautiful rose and I'm gonna hand this off now to Inga and she's gonna finish up with some beautiful foliage. And when you're all done, don't forget to share on the Paper Florist. Use the hashtag Paper Flower Challenge. And don't forget to let us know if you enjoy our tutorials. Thanks so much for joining me and I'm gonna hand it off to Inga.